What is up, guys? Welcome to the Think Computers Weekly Tech Podcast. This is episode 337, and our podcast this week is brought to you by Amazon. If you go to thinkcomputers.org forward slash Amazon and happen to purchase something that gives us a little kickback and uh, keeps the podcast on going. With me is my laughing, apparently, co-host Ryan. Uh, I noticed a green bar on my Spotify window up here because I'm like have it prepped kind of for the stream uh, later yeah, yeah. on when we game. And the green bar shows and it says listening on your you know Echo Show. And I looked to see what it was playing. And it's a, my kids are obviously listening to a song called Never Get Naked in Your Shower. So <laughs> That's an interesting song title. Uh, who knows? I don't know. Yeah. Anyhow, very, yep, I'm here. Very, very interesting. Well, uh, we're here. We're here on uh Thursday. We're not here on Wednesday. Yep. Uh Ryan had to reschedule. It was his wife's birthday. It was. It and was. uh did you did you guys go anywhere special? We just went and ate uh, had a dinner and like honestly, I think we were gone for like an hour tops. We had oh, a really? neighbor yeah. a neighbor friend watch our kids and it just turned out like Oh, we had dinner and that was it. We didn't have any like major plans. We're doing some stuff this weekend, but uh, gotcha. gotcha. No, it was nice. Just yeah. Well, glad you guys were able to uh, get out of the house and you know, I I, I feel like I haven't left my place in like a week. Oh, have <laughs> you? Like a, uh, I think you have because I think I, I mean, feel like so I like, saw a picture from the, you the other day where you're outside. Yeah, like I go for a run or go to the gym in the morning, but beyond that, not much. Uh, actually i yesterday i did leave i did leave because i had to do a bunch of returns i've been buying stuff on amazon for this new desk build and then i get the stuff and then i put it on this current desk that i have and i'm like yeah this isn't going to work on the new things so i have to send it back and then i bought a new gimbal like a, a gimbal for a camera and yep. that's not going to work it? out yeah I re- yeah i returned okay. that um because it doesn't fit the payload of of this camera, which is the one that obviously we'd want to use for. Well, um, I think it'll it'll fit that camera, just not the camera and lens combo you wanted, right? And the cage. This cage is heavy. And the cage, too. Um, so, yeah, it's just what it, it, I'm just having bad luck. I'm just like buying stuff and then trying it out and then returning it. Just abusing, is, abusing Amazon. Yeah. But it's kind of funny because, like, I think uh, I don't know if you can actually do this, but like the return, you can select the return to just like go into your Amazon account. So you have like a balance on your am in your Amazon, like as a gift card. So technically like I buy stuff and I, and I get points on my credit card. And then when I return, it doesn't show it as a return on the credit card. It just, Oh, and so you get to keep those. Re- Ooh, that, yeah. So mm, I get to keep the reward mm, points. So I think I got right, something going and okay. start buying stuff and returning it and get all these points. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think at least I think I, I assume, I don't know though. Um, I don't know. But yeah, I've just been having bad luck. I have a new camera stand that just came today that I just set up before we started the stream. And it's going to work. I just have to adjust it slightly because I I have a ring light. um, But the ring light needs to go on the stand, but it won't. The stand is made like for a camera, but I... Uh, you'll see it in like a couple weeks. I need weeks to do something with my camera lighting. I feel so white today. So pasty. Yeah, it's well, what I found. So I did a lot. I did a ton of research, watch a ton of YouTube videos. So you have the Elgato key lights. Yes. And you have two of yes. them. Yes. Yeah. So I was considering those. Actually, that's another thing I returned. I had bought a key light, just one. And it just it was so bright for the like the light that it gave off. Was that the it, second one, though? Or that was the first one? Because you bought one and you're like, no, I'm taking this back. And then you had a new one just the other day. Yeah, I, I returned both of them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm just not having good luck with any of this stuff. Because the thing is, it's like you have to try it. You have to see how it's going to work with your setup. And like, luckily with Amazon, you can return things within 30 days. Um, but I have this ring light, which actually works so much better than having, at least for me. And it's it's off to the side right now. It's going to be like right here in the around the camera once I'm finished getting this all set up. But it's just been a pain, like trying to buy stuff. And then I'm doing the desk build. Plus, we're doing the PC build, which is coming together. Um, and then I have to move this desk uh, over there where that is. So all that's going to be taken that off. That's just going away. Well, I mean, the stuff that's on it isn't going away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But th- like those are IKEA desks, and those are getting just going into storage. Um, and then this desk is going to go over there, and we're going to get everything nice and organized, hopefully. 
because that that desk is just a mess of things and it just yeah but it, it, that's your test bench desk right like it, you're always moving stuff around and pl testing stuff so it, it can be a mess yeah but it's just like i i want to keep this room nice and clean i think you know when you go into if your office is dirty you're gonna feel like you know you're ever, like you're just not as productive and i just want to keep things nice and clean and i want to set up that desk to also be able to shoot video and do other stuff too um if we do like monitor reviews and things like that it just would make things a lot easier i would say so lots to do lots of reviews we i have so many products into review too just so much stuff going on um so yeah we're super busy but i i like it and i like that if you look at the video quality in my uh camera compared to a couple weeks ago we fine-tuned it a little bit last week yeah, it's much did. it's much better obviously the lighting helps we're, we're getting there I have more lights. I turned on the lighting behind that desk, which has been in the back of that desk for like a year, but I just had never turned it on for the podcast. So it was a little bit of lighting. We're just doing all kinds of crazy stuff here. So I'm super excited uh, about all the things that are coming and all the new bill. It's just nice to get all new stuff. Um, so yeah, so pretty excited uh, about all of that. Before we get into reviews, I want to let you guys know that we do have our full show notes page uh, that has everything that we're going to be talking about this week. So, you know, you can go through and click through with us. Uh, if you want to jump ahead, you can go ahead and do that as well. It is linked in the description uh, of this video uh, or the description if you're just, you know, uh, listening later, you're not watching the video. It's all there. So if you want to click through or if you hear something in the podcast and you want to be like, oh, what were they talking about? Right. You can go to the show notes and then go to that article and get more information. So let's jump right into reviews this week. And I took a look at a new Ryzen uh, 7000 series processor. So when I bought uh, the Ryzen 9 7900X, this sits right below the 7950X. So when you saw the reviews come out about two weeks ago, basically everybody reviewed the 7950X. So all the reviewers who AMD set pro sent processors, most of them got the 7950X. You know, AMD wants to, to be the top dog. Um, for me, I think the 7900X made sense. Uh, 12 core, 24 thread, base clock of 4.7 gigahertz. It boosts up to 5.6 gigahertz. Um, again, it sits right, right below the flagship processor. I believe this is five, 549 retail. Um, I bought this on Newegg and I hadn't bought anything on Newegg. Like typically it's just Amazon. It just, you right. know, you're used to Prime. Um, but the day that these became available to buy, Amazon didn't have it. Went to Newegg, ordered it that day, got it the next afternoon. I did have to oh, pay for nice. shipping. Yeah. So I paid I paid seven bucks for shipping, but still. That's not terrible. Yeah. For that it, quick a turnaround? Yeah. I, like I said, I live in San Diego, so I, I assume sure. there's like a distribution center around here. But it was a good, you know, uh, good process. So, again, we always talk about Amazon, but if you find something on Newegg, I don't, you know. Again, I hadn't ordered from them in a while, but... It came. They were they were just the biggest thing prior to Amazon really yeah. catching on, right? Like they were. That was where you got everything. Yeah, Anyhow. for sure. Um, but yeah, so twelve core, twenty four thread. Um, that configuration makes it really great if you're a content creator, if you're doing streaming. Um, also, obviously for gaming as well. Um, a lot of power. And again, unlike Intel, these are all performance cores, so they're going to boost all. You know. There, there's no efficient cores and and other cores. It's just back and forth. You know what I mean? You don't. There's all the same cores, uh, which is right. which is pretty right. nice. Uh, we can take a look at the new packaging. <laughs> the only reason I'm not a fan of it is because the processor sits in the middle here, and then like I like to display these. And obviously, if you're using the processor, there's nothing in there. So uh, that's the only real issue. Um, but the processor, of course, we have a massive change. In the design of the processor, uh, for a couple of reasons. One, we have this heat sink that we had talked about for months leading up to the release here. This weird heat sink that leaves, you know, all these other connections open so they don't get all the heat that you're going to get from the processor itself. Um, and we talked about it. It's, you know, it's easier to pick up, I would say, compared to like old Ryzen Pro. You can actually pick this thing up a lot oh, yeah. easier. Yep. Um, and you can see kind of, you know, what, what that looks like. Also, a, we've switched from PGA with the pins actually on the processor itself 
to LGA. So, you know, bottom processor looks like bottom of an Intel processor. And then we have an actual socket uh, where the processor actually goes into, which was a little different. Again, we're so used to since, you know, the beginning of Ryzen, we have PGA just went down in there and now we have LGA, which I actually like. Um, and again, this locks the, the LGA socket locks the processor down. So there's been so many times where I've pulled an older Ryzen processor out of the socket, even if it's locked in, if you're pulling a cooler off, sometimes it will pull the entire chip off. This yep. uh, locking mechanism makes it so that won't ever happen, which is good, which is a good thing. Yep. Um, so yeah, yeah that's so all that's scary pretty... pulling it out. <laughs> and you're like, that wasn't supposed to come out like that. Yeah, and then if you <laughs> don't all. know, like if it's maybe it's the first time it's ever happened, you're like, did I just break my CPU? So right. I pulled it out. Right. Like you don't know. Um, and then one time I, I did that, I had a well, I had a 3900X and I pulled it off. I was it was the processor we used for CPU coolers, I think, or something. And I pulled it off, it came off with a cooler, and then I was like trying to wiggle it off, and then I dropped it, and then I busted the pins, and then there goes that processor. It's just gone. Yeah, dead. Um, so yeah, so we tested against um a bunch of Ryzen 5000 series processors processors as well as the um as the 12 900 K. So that's kind of, you know, and in all of the CPU testing, I mean, it just blows it out of the water. You can look at all these graphs, but it's blowing, you know, pretty much it, it stays pretty close with the, the 12 900 K, but it's still beating it in all of these CPU tests. So that's why I say, if you're doing, if you're a content creator, you're doing video editing, you're doing stuff um, that's going to make use of a lot of cores, uh, you're encoding, whether you're a streamer or something like that. Um, this process is going to be great for you for that. And you can see in all of these tests, it does a really great job um, compared to the previous generation, Ryzen 5000 series, also compared to Intel's uh, previous generation. Um, and then on the graphics side, we have it kind of, kind of sitting in the middle of the pack, and I'll kind of explain why. But if we look at our graphics test, it's not necessarily the best performing out of the the test now in the game tests the thing that you'll see is different games are either better on intel or better on uh amd you kind of see that um so you see kind of a mixed bag when it comes to the uh processors and you know the the performance here, you know, it beat everything in all the CPU tests, but in the gaming test is a little bit all over the place. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, one, like I said, sometimes Intel just performs better at the specific games. Also, this CPU is split into two different uh, dies. So you have, you know, and you have an interconnect between them. Whereas something like the 5800X, which we tested against, it doesn't have that interconnect. Right. Uh, so you're not going to have that little bit of latency between the, you know, with the two different dice communicating with each other. That's why I say like, if you're strictly gaming, um, the 7700 X uses a single die, something to consider. Um, and then we still haven't seen a 5,800 or a 7,800 X come out right. yet. Um, and there's the X 3d parts. So if you are looking for something like that, it's definitely worth waiting. If you can wait, you know, say like you're someone like Ryan, what generation of Ryzen are you on? 3000 or uh, 3000 series. Yeah. 3000. So like say you're in 3000 series, you want to upgrade, but you're strictly gaming. Maybe wait. We're kind of expecting um, X3D parts at CES in January. So if you can wait a little bit, maybe graphics cards will be a little bit lower. You might even, we might even have some other parts come out by then too. Yep. Um, we have stuff that we'll be talking about. So, um, so yeah, I think it's a really great processor. Great to see it perform obviously better than the previous generation. Um, and again, I think with 12 core, 24 thread, it is a great all around processor. So for somebody like me, I do, we do gaming here, uh, video editing, um, and things like that, where I, I can make use of all those cores. Um, it's perfect for that. And like I said, for gaming, if you are gaming, there are some other processors that would, you know, save you maybe 50, hundred bucks where that you could put that towards a better graphics card. I think, again, when you are gaming, you want to put all the money you can into your graphics card. And then the CPU obviously is going to be secondary to that. So, um, sure. so yeah, so I, I like to mismatched. 
<laughs> oh yeah, like you're not gonna put like a Ryzen three with like a forty ninety right, uh, right. type thing. But I I really like the processor. Um, I again I really like that it's LGA now. It's not gonna fly off. Um, and yeah, the and the there when I took this this off, Ryan, we had talked about this. There's not like crazy thermal paste everywhere either. It, it stays to the edges, and it's Good. not right. like right. yeah. It's not yes. crazy all over the Apply place. Apply the proper amount and you'll be just fine. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> uh, for sure. So, so yeah, I liked it. I gave it a 9 out of 10 and recommended. Um, and the one thing you do have to consider, too, um, when any new CPU comes out is the platform. So with yes. Ryzen 7000 series, uh, we have new motherboards. You have to get that motherboard, so you can't socket this into an older Ryzen motherboard or an old AM4 motherboard. Uh, this is AM5, new socket. So you need a new motherboard, which they do have a premium. So you have that. Also, there's no DDR4 support like you have with Intel. Uh, and you can get a, you know, a Z790 board that supports DDR4 or DDR5. It's DDR5 only. And of course, those kits are a little bit more expensive. But on this platform, you are going to get PCI Express 5.0 for graphics as well as storage. And of course, DDR5 much faster. So those are the kind of the caveats. Um, but I think if you're going to be upgrading now is just a great time because you have new graphics cards. We're going to have new graphics cards coming next month from AMD. And then we have new processors as well. Um, sadly, I don't have a new Intel processor to compare this against. Um, I think Intel is beating out Ryzen by a little bit. Um, as far as gaming goes and things like that, I would just check out the reviews. There's a ton out there. Um, but, but myself personally, I didn't have, I don't have one of those to test, uh, but maybe down the line we'll get one and we'll tell you all about that as well. But it's, it's always so much fun. Just like tech checking out new tech, uh, you know, right when it comes out. Um, yeah. So check, uh, check that review out. And then I also took a look at a case that's been out for a while. We've talked about it when it was announced. I was like, this is awesome. Um, and I finally, I know it's literally been sitting here for like two months. I just finally got to it. It is a really, really good case. Uh, it is the Height Y60. And before I get into this, um, we have some people in the chat that I didn't shout out. We have Nelson in the chat. Uh, we have Lee Harrington. Good to see you here, man. I haven't seen him in a while. I think I haven't seen him since CES two, three years ago. Um, but good to see him in the chat as well. Um, but yeah, the Height Y60. Uh, we talked about height um, with their mini, uh, the Revolt 3, which was a basically a case much like the, was it the NCXT H, was it called the H1, H2? I don't know. But the really small form factor NZXT case, basically done better. Height just did it better, in my opinion. Um, and it was really impressive because very new company, uh, making a case that just made sense. And then when I saw this case, I was like, wow, they're really making cases that people want. Um, it, we'll, we'll look at this case and you'll say, what, what does this look like, Ryan? What, what kind of case does this look like? Sort of. Oh, for sure. It looks like a uh, uh, Lee and Lee internally. Anyways, to yeah. Me. Yeah, internally and externally, Lee and Lee uh, O11 series. O11 for sure. Just that, yes. that side grill, right, that we've gotten so used to. Yeah, anytime you see it, you're like, oh, this is just like this case. Yeah, I think obviously they've taken some inspiration from that case. Oh, sure. Uh, you, you can definitely see that here. Uh, but the big difference with this case um, is that the, you know, with the O11 dynamic, it's a typical case. So you have a panel and then a front panel. Here, what they did is they put a 45 degree angle panel in here. So you can really see the whole case. I call this the aquarium case. I mean, it's going to show everything in that main compartment, uh, which is really cool. So we have the red version. It also comes in a white version and a black version. All three versions do have a black interior. So the white version is not like a snow version where everything is sure. white. You're still going to get the black interior. So if you're trying to do a crazy all white build, something to consider for sure. Um, but yeah, in the the paint on this, at least on the red one, is like this glossy red. It, it's really, really, it definitely stands out for sure. It's, it's is that like, metal then around the tempered glass? Yeah, so this is all metal. Okay. Yeah. All right, nice. All metal around there. Um, just a great looking case, um, and it's really made to like if you if if you have a desk and you 
put this on the one side of your desk. It's really meant to sit on the uh, the right hand side of your desk. So then your connections kind of are right here at the bottom. Um, so you have power connection to USB 3.2 and then a type C over here. And then you have a combo audio connection on this side. They do provide an adapter as well. So if you do have a headset that um, has microphone, it's not a combo one and has a microphone and audio connections, they do provide a little Y adapter for that. Uh, so you can still make use of your headsets. Uh, you can see down the front, again, no intake. The intake will be on the side. Um, and it's just a lot of glass on this, like I said. But that that front 45-degree angle just makes this just look a little bit different. Um, you know, and then at the top, they have this sort of like all of these kind of slits or this ventilation. It's all throughout the case. So you can see it here on the top. You can see it's on the side here. Yeah, You'll that see design it. design just follows it everywhere. Yeah, so it's That's like... Nice. You know, a lot of times we just see like some normal ventilation. I really like with this case, the design elements are followed throughout the entire case, which is really cool. Um, so the top of the case, uh, this little top panel is plastic and it does pop off. It gives you room up top for, uh, what do we got up top? The top parts. Looks like it'd be a 360, but... Yeah, no. So yeah, it's where it's three 120 millimeter fans or radiators up to 360 millimeters, uh, which is nice. And this bracket, uh, you can see there are some screws right here. You take this off and you can take the bracket out, which of course makes it easier to install fans or water cooling outside of the case. Um, so yeah, so definitely uh, some nice stuff there. The back of the case is also very different. Um, one thing to point out is we have these low profile um expansion slots so what's one of the caveats hmm. of the case is that if you're going to install the, your graphics card will be installed vertically and we'll talk about that but if you have any other card say you have like a capture card or something like that it has to be low profile um i didn't so realize that, that. yeah so kind that's of one of the odd now, a lot of people are just installing a graphics card and this won't matter, right? Uh, yeah. But if you are installing sound card, uh, capture, I would say the big one would be a capture card, something like that. Um, it has to be low profile. So that's that's one of the caveats. But because they made this and they didn't make the case uh, wider, you're actually on this side... Um, you're able to fit a full ATX power supply. So unlike the Lee and Lee O11 Dynamic Mini, which is about the same size of this case, that only supports SFX and SFXL power supplies. This supports full size power supplies. So give or take, you know, kind of, I don't know. I don't know which one you would take. A lot of times people do have an extra power supply laying around or they're moving builds and they already have a power supply um, in a, you know, 850 to a thousand watt sfx is 200 dollars. so yeah so yeah um and then right above that we do have storage so you have these removable storage trays which are metal and they kind of just they have thumb screws uh they're those uh, are cool one, yeah those are the thumb screws that stay on so you won't lose them either <laughs> i've done that so many times loose loose screws um so these just you know you remove the screws and they slide out they support either one three and a half inch drive or two 2.5 inch drives uh so two ssds or a single um single 3.5 inch drive so in total you can fit up to four hard drives in here um which is a little bit limiting but again I, I mean, I think, think about all the boards that have onboard M.2 slots, right? You yeah. can still fit a ton of storage in this thing. Yeah. On the bottom section, mm -hmm. uh, we have a we have a removable grill uh, here, which you can see. Uh, or not grill, removable um, filter. filter. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. We have a removable filter. And then in that filter uh, section, once you remove it, we have two included fans. These are 120 millimeter fans, um, just normal fans. They're not... Uh, RGB or anything like that. They're just, you know, um, just our normal fans. And then when we get inside the case, uh, the panels are awesome. So there's just a thumb screw and the panel just kind of comes off and it's it will sit like this. So it doesn't fall. It's kind of in a groove. Um, so you can unlock it and then pull it straight out. This, of course, we talk about this so much, but I've 
scratch so many desks <laughs> with panels dropping the so, panel or, yeah, yeah dropping the panel or it just comes off this just saves you that trouble it just makes it easier and it also makes it easier to put back on you put it in the groove and then you just you know you know it's lined up and yeah you know snap it's back in place and, yeah and all of that so uh you have that um and then inside uh we have this very interesting thing which is the included pci express 4.0 riser um so the riser is included and again this is pci express 4.0 um these will cost if you just buy a riser it will cost 50 60 70 bucks sure. uh, so that, that is included with the case and it is mounted to the bottom of the case and you can again you can see those design elements like i said going throughout here so basically height is forcing you to do a vertical gpu though you can't do a horizontal gpu you have to do it vertically um and then the 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 uh the adapter here it is colored to whatever color of the case. So in the red version, ours is red. The black version will be black. The white version, it's white. Super cool. Um, that again, they you know we've seen cases that that do this, but they don't do this little design element, uh, making it match the case and and all that. So I really really like that there as well. Also, as far as motherboard support, you can do uh, mini ITX, micro ATX, ATX, and extended ATX. Extended ATX will extend a little bit over this gap here. So you want to definitely keep that in mind. But I have seen extended ATX builds in this. It shouldn't be a real issue there at all. Towards the front, we have our side mounts. Side mounts uh, supports two one, what is it? Two 120s or 140 millimeter fans or radiators up to 280 millimeters. So the, the way the cooling works in this, um, you know, you have intakes on the bottom in the side bringing air in and then you would have air coming out the top uh so you'd have you you have mount fans and out the rear so you do get another 120 at the rear uh so that's kind of how the cooling works we've seen a lot of cases that use this exact same system um so they keep the front of the case clean I, I, it's it's decently efficient uh it but you need to have the fans and of course the only fans that are included on this are the two at the bottom and then the one uh, at the rear rear panel comes off just the same it has an integrated filter but it's not removable um so you can take the panel off and clean it if you want but there is a filter there for all of the stuff at the back um also at the back it, it's pretty simple not much to do here we have a main compartment over here that houses your power supply and then over here this house is uh, of course those are those trays for your hard drives and then we have the the mounts here um it is nice. They have all of the holes, like all the cable routing holes. Cable routing in this is so easy. Uh, again, things were just very, very well thought out, um, which which I really like. You can see, you know, cable routing holes. Like here's where the fans are at the bottom. Cables come out. They come over here. There's just enough holes everywhere. Um, it's just, you know, it's it's super easy. Our installation was super easy. The only weird thing was is that the fan the rear fan the cable was installed what? the the cable coming out came out the bottom here and it's just like it should have been coming out the the top over here so i just you know i took the fan off and moved it so we didn't have that issue uh beyond that uh no real issues with installation it's super easy you have more than enough room to um work with inside nothing was hard to install you know Here's our graphics card mounted vertically. Super easy to do there. Um, here you can see our finished build. Um, you know, I didn't, there's a plenty of tie down points, but I didn't feel the need to use them because all this stuff is hidden back here. Not a big deal. Um, and you can see the front of our build. Super clean, super easy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like this. Uh, I don't know that I, I would prefer, I wouldn't prefer the red. I think the black or the white, but I, I do like the design of this case. It, it's yeah. pretty cool. And this is kind of, I would say, and you can see it's, it's kind of dark in there because of how this, you know, build is you definitely want RGB fans and you definitely probably want, um, some other type of yeah, RGB strip along the top or something. Yeah. To light this thing up inside. I think if you put the two side mount fans, um, the other thing is too, is that your only mount at the bottom, um, is covered. So if you do do RGB lighting, you're not going to really see it, you know? Um, 
And another thing about the fans is they're RPM. They're not uh, PWM fans, which is gotcha. kind of cheaping out a little bit, I would say. Um, you know, they're the three pin, not the four pin. Um, so I would say I really like this case. It's it's really well thought out, easy to build in. Um, crappy fans, I would say. Uh, I think if you're doing a build in this, you're going to want RGB fans. So you're going to replace all the fans anyways. So I would have liked to have seen a fanless version. Uh, Lee and Lee sells their O11s completely fanless. Um, right. So you as the, the builder gets to pick all the fans because most people, they're going to trash these fans either one because they want RGB or because they want PWM fans. Um, so the case is $199, uh, which does seem expensive for what this is, but the riser you know, is basically $50 of that cost um lots of glass here the only other thing i don't like i do like the it depends on how you're doing your build but you know that bottom section of the case again limits kind of what you can do so actually let me go to the next page here so this bottom section yes it looks cool and everything but again what if i want rgb fans right or something yeah that i can be very muted if if, if they were there yeah, so that that's the only thing. But if you're not using them, it just continues the design elements throughout the case. But I do like this case. Again, three different color options available at launch, which I like. Um, super easy to build in. And again, it's a smaller case because we were, you know, not a ton of room for hard drives. It's it's really, really nice. And you can kind of see it sitting. Yeah, it's right it's there. Yeah, right there. over the right shoulder. I know. Time. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. I got it right this time. So yeah. So guys check out the review. I, I like the case. Uh, we've already seen so many great builds in this too. If you just like look up like height Y60 build, uh, there's a ton of really good ones. You can do great water cooling in this. Um, yeah, check it out. I like it. Uh, Nelson, uh, asked who make the case. It is height H Y T E. Um, they're relatively new into the into this space, so they have some decent products so far. I mean, uh, I have their new headset as well, so they have a new headset. Uh, so they're making like just I like them because they're not making like twenty cases or thirty cases right off the bat. They're making like here's this case, this is what it's for. You know, uh, for the headset, it's like here is a inexpensive headset. I'll, I'll test it and see what it does. Um, but I like a, a lot of what they're doing. So. Um, so yeah, check it out. And then Ryan got his video done of finally, the, right? Yeah, of uh, the Cooler Master CK721. So he reviewed right. this a few months ago, um, and he made a really great video on it. Great video editing, I would say. Ryan did some. Uh, things, I don't know about that, but different things on this. Uh, talking yeah. about the keyboard, uh, he goes over the you know he goes over the keyboard. He goes over different lighting, the software. All kinds of stuff on this keyboard. So if you miss the initial review and you know you're lazy and you don't want to read and you just want to throw this on, uh, go ahead and check it out. We have it linked in the show notes. Uh, it's on our YouTube page. Um, it's a yep. great little keyboard, and they just came out with a bigger one or Is smaller it, I one. Is it that. bigger one or small? It's a CK seven. I forget. They literally just came like like a couple of days ago. They came out with a T a TKL because this is sixty. Yep. I think they came out with a TKL version of the same keyboard. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Ryan does a really great job going over this. So check it out on our YouTube page uh, this week for Case Mod Friday, which, if you guys don't know, is where we highlight a case mod. I have to say, this is one of the better. Actually, this this whole contest that, that Thermal Take was doing for what is this case? This is the Core P3 TG Pro. I saw like three or four of these were like amazing. Um, so I initially thought this build, when you see this, do you think Halo? Because I thought Halo. Uh, I went right to Modern Warfare. Oh, maybe because I'm, I, I've i never, maybe I played Modern Warfare, but like, I don't think I have. But it's just because it, it looked very military to me and I, I yeah. didn't play Halo, right? So that's okay. probably why I skipped past, past Halo. Yeah, so this go that route, though. this is a thermal take. I couldn't find it when I was doing this. So I, was, I just I picked this up real quick uh, on Facebook. I saw this one, um, but I guess thermal take is doing some type of case modding contest with this case specifically. 
somebody did an Overwatch one of this, which we might feature in a couple of weeks. Also very awesome. Um, but I mean, look at that. I mean, that's awesome. That's <laughs> all sweet. the all the little design elements everywhere for Modern Warfare. It's on you know made custom fan grills. You have all this extra stuff added. All the panels redone and painted and. The oh, only you know, thing I don't like about it is the color of the coolant. That's it. Other than that, I think this build is amazing. I can't. Oh, I yeah. Don't like the green. Yeah. It, is it? Now, would it be hard to get this color? You would have to do like a pastel color. You know what I mean? Okay. You'd have to have one of the pastel or not pastel, but just like kind of the chalky. What, I don't know uh, what the, the actual term for it is. What color would you do on this for the coolant? I think it would look good with that that green color, or I don't know, all even clear would look good. Yeah, because you because you're only seeing it here mm -hmm. and and there. So even the like the the painting of the water block. Yes. Yeah. Every the, everything's been looked at on this. There's nothing yeah, outside of that coolant color that I don't like about this. Yeah, it's it's very very well done. Um, this is done by who did this one? This is done by Tantric Mods. We featured a few of his builds before. Yeah. Um, so really good stuff. Like I said, check this one out. Um, we'll probably feature another one of these in a few weeks because I saw at least two on Facebook. Uh, there's a bunch of great Facebook groups uh, that that you know people showcase their builds and stuff. And I, I again, I assume because they're very similar that Thermal Take is doing some type of case mod contest with this case specifically. So uh, great to see and check that out. Um, you know, and like I always say, we have our full section of case mod Friday builds uh, that you guys can check out. And we are doing a contest. I went into the vault, which I call the uh, the closet behind me, a full of hardware. And I, <laughs> I picked something out to give away to you guys. Uh, so we are giving away uh, titanium micro mercury, two terabytes uh, portable solid state drive. And I wish oh, I do have the one that I reviewed, but it actually sent us two um and they said keep the other one so we finally given it away uh but here it is it's a little portable ssd um it's great the one thing i like about it well there's two things i like about it one is that it's very rugged like it it's like military spec ruggedness or whatever so you can like throw this around i think somebody when somebody reviewed this and they ran it over um, so it's going to survive anything. So if you're traveling or something like this, is a perfect drive. It goes, it goes great with the case we just looked at. The case yeah. <laughs> and then secondly, the cable is attached to the drive. Now, that, that sometimes is a caveat because if this cable fails, then you're kind of screwed. Um, you know, but yep. it's nice because I always forget cables for drives like I'm an idiot. And um, it's just nice that the cable's connected. Also, one thing I really did like, we actually reviewed this. Uh, you can check out the review on the website, but um, you can open this up and there's just an M.2 drive in here. So if you ever wanted to upgrade or say the cable does something happens with the cable, you can pull the drive out and you're not totally screwed, but that probably won't nice. happen. Uh, but yeah, we're giving away. Um, running this contest on gleam like we do so a bunch of ways to enter uh the giveaway contest is in the uh description or in our show notes just check it out um but yeah just giving you guys uh a, a free portable ssd in this usb 3.2 gen 2 so a thousand megabytes a second read and write which makes the drive pretty much perfect for like portable games or video editing on the go or anything it can really handle all of that 4k movies all that all that kind of stuff that this uh drive definitely can do so get, get your entry in a uh, bunch of different ways to enter on that one um and then news for the week and the the you know the big story <laughs> this week it's the so hot, funny hot hot story of the week yeah the hot story of the week the big story of the week uh is that apparently rtx 4090 graphics cards are melting now i have to say three weeks ago when this this adapter came out i specifically said on this podcast i said this is a fire hazard i called the con i called the adapter a fire starter and you know i was just like well if nvidia says it's all right it's all right and then you have uh, things like this happening where the it's burning up, um, you know, and destroying cards, uh, multiple reports of this, not just this one off. There's tons. Uh, I have some other pictures that I found online of the connector just 
melting. Um, it, it, it's really melting. And, you know, I was thinking back and when we initially talked about this connector, remember when they said the lifespan was like 30 plus? Yeah, there was like, yeah, a lifespan to this thing. And it's, that's right there is. And then I was concerning. thinking, I was like, when all this started happening, I was like, well, maybe it's just a crap, crappy cable. And there's there's been people talking about, oh, it's how they bent the cable. But it's like, this shouldn't happen. And again, you're putting right. a lot of power into a single connection. Like we've talked about that. How much power is going, you know, you're going from four eight pins to a single connection. All that juice is just going right into there. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel bad for the guys that this happened to. I, I believe these are getting replaced. I would, you would hope, um, cause that would just not be great, you know? Um, yeah, Lee says it's, you know, the outer pins, best option for a 4,000 series owners to buy a power supply that has the plug or, you know, supports this natively. I agree with that. Right. I, th I think the, the issue here is the adapter, not necessarily the 4090s, uh, power connector on the card itself. So yeah, if you can getting a uh, power supply that has this natively is going to be the best bet in my opinion. Yeah. And it's just like, I, I don't think people building, they're not like, Oh, I don't, you know, especially when you're like routing cables. Cause again, a lot of, from what I've read is that there's issues. If you bend the cable a certain way, it kind of Snap causes the soldering this, off. It causes yeah. this to happen. And again, when I'm doing builds, like I'm just moving cables or I'm not thinking of like, Oh, I can't bend this this way. Um, and again, we've been building PCs for so long. That's never really been an issue where I'm like, oh, I can't bend this cable over. It's just cable. Um, yep. so I think that is the main issue. I've, we've heard that NVIDIA is investigating this. They're asking like the AIBs to send these cards specifically to and back to NVIDIA to see what the issue is. Um, it would just, you know, what if there's like a recall on the adapters? <laughs> They already Nvidia already had to provide all the adapters for all the cars. Right. And then if there's a recall on the adapter, that's just so much money. And they've already wasted money on the 4080 12 gigabyte. Right, they gotta canceled. pull that thing back. Yep. Yeah, that's just uh it seems like I don't know. Nvidia's just having some having you know, a rough, but again, rough couple months, maybe. This isn't like every this isn't happening to every card. No. You know. Um, or anything like that. And again, it's not specifically the card. It's more or less the adapter. Um, Lee in the chat, he said, tweaking cable left and right breaks the solder, causes it to uh, causes it to short uh, to short the cable out. Yeah, it's just right. you know, I, I think the biggest thing is you're excited to build your new PC. You're not necessarily thinking about how you're bending the cable. Even oh. when I do builds now, like just that height Y60, I was just moving cables around. I didn't really think, oh, I have to be super careful with this cable. I can't bend it in a certain direction. Like nobody's really thinking about that, especially the excitement of, you know, you just got a 4090. Like I want to plug this thing in and start gaming. It's, yeah, so that's what's happening uh, with this. We'll keep you guys updated on if anything comes, else comes of this, if there's a recall, uh, if NVIDIA, you know, if there's an actual official response from NVIDIA, um, kind of what the deal is, or if there's like a, you know, anything else that comes out about this, we'll let you guys know, but it's obviously a big deal. I mean, how much, what are these 1599, <laughs> you know, imagine you like load up your game, you know, you run to the bathroom real quick because you're going to be gaming all night. You come back and you you smell that. I mean, I'm it's sure like, at some it's point. magic you, smoke you, smell. Yeah, you have you smell burning plastic uh, or you've I have. I've burnt stuff in PCs over the years. Like, you know what that smells like? And you're like, oh, my God, what's on, what's on fire on my PC? Right. And then you find out it's your graphics card. Oh, man, that would just that would be I would be so upset. So. So, yeah, hopefully that doesn't happen to anybody. Uh, and we'll, like I said, we'll keep you guys updated on, why can't I switch back to the other view? That's weird. Oh, there we go. That view. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Back to the view. Uh, so anyways, um, that's kind of what's going on. And then AMD, um, when, when this all was going on, um, AMD was talking about their new series and somebody asked them on Twitter, 
you know, it, are your cards going to have this connector? Will this also be an issue on your cards? And AMD responded uh, saying that they, they, the 16 pin connection is not going to be on their new card. So you'll see two, two eight pins on the higher end cards. You'll see three eight pins, which we've seen before on AMD cards and NVIDIA cards. Um, so they're not, you know, they, they confirmed it. So, yeah, I think AMD is like, yeah, we'll let this one kind of <laughs> let it shake out a bit here. Yeah, yeah let it shake out a bit uh, and, you know, kind of see where that goes. And again, this allows, even though there is the adapter, it, you know, it says AMD is like, oh, we don't have issues with our cards. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, and just think, you know, it's, a, it's usually a couple of years between generations of cards. So, 8,000 series by then, you know, maybe you'll have a higher ratio of people that have upgraded power supplies to include yeah. that type of connector. And then you really don't have to worry about it, right? Yeah. So. Um, talking about AMD, they are going to have a live event. Um, talking about Radeon 7000 series, RDNA 3, uh, they announced it November 3rd. So that's coming up. Yeah, next uh, week. Yeah, next week. So. Uh, November 3rd, you can watch it on their YouTube. It'll be everywhere you can watch it. Um, if you go to amd.com forward slash Radeon, uh, you can yeah, you can check it out. And uh, yeah, what do you, we talked about this before, but like, do you think we're going to get something like a 4090 equivalent announced at this event? Uh, I don't think so. But at the same time, who knows? Like, uh, you, can, you can only talk to the 4090 because that's the only NVIDIA card out right now, right? I can't say, oh, I think we'll get something like a 4080 because we don't know how that's going to perform yet. Yeah. Right? So I I think they're just going to have their card. I don't think they're going to be at a 4090 level. But I can't you say think, that their card's going to be an 80 level, right? Do you think they would be like, here's our top end card, 7950X or 7900? I like that they're on par with the numbers the, and the processors and the graphics cards, right? The, yes. the name. Yeah, name. they, yep. You so know, like here's 7,000 series seven yeah. from AMD. Yep. So if they're going to be like, here's the 7900X or 7900, whatever, their highest end card, it'd be like, it's a thousand dollars and it's, I don't know, whatever percent slower than the 4090. Do you think they would put 4090 stats? in with their sure stuff if, in with if that was their price point yeah and they're like oh it's 10 percent or whatever percentage slower than the 4090 absolutely and they can also say that there's no power there's <laughs> and no you can use your current power supply and don't have to worry about yeah you know, melting things okay yeah okay yeah because uh, it would it, be it, a, it, it would be a, a weird spot though because they can't like compare it to anything but the top end that nvidia has right now yeah. Do you think AMD would put out a fifteen hundred dollar graphics card? No. Yeah. I don't know. We'll um, see. Unless, no. Like unless it was up, you know, up to par with a, a forty ninety. You know, it'd but be I, nice I to still see... don't even think they would be at that price point. You know, it'd be nice to see this generation from AMD. Uh, we haven't seen it from AMD, and we haven't seen it from Nvidia in a long time. Is a dual GPU graphics oh, card. Oh, jeez. Remember those? Yeah. Remember how cool those were? There was like twenty five. Yeah. There's like you know when they came out with that they'd be like oh we're gonna make it 25 of these they're dual GPUs, but uh, yeah but we got PLX it. chip, yeah. yeah those were the days man I remember all that stuff, uh so yeah so we'll, we'll keep you updated obviously next week when all that goes down uh, check the website we'll have articles on all the new stuff that's gonna be hopefully announced and we'll let you know when it's available prices and our thoughts on it so stay tuned. For that uh talking about Nvidia uh, we talked about it and Ryan famously said last week um, mm -hmm. that the RTX 4070 will, won't will be the rebadged right. RTX 4080 12 gigabyte that was canceled. Um, and it makes sense because they want to sell that, whatever that, re whatever that RTX 4080 12 gigabyte, they still want to sell that for what, $900? Yeah. <laughs> um, and the 4070 is going to be a likely cut down version of that. Um, Igor's lab, who we have this information from, or no, sorry, not Igor's lab. Uh, Moore's law is not dead. Who we have this information sent from said basically the same thing. Um, you know, luckily what he did say is almost none were made in North America 
of the 4812 mm. gigabytes. Like they so they had just in. just started, yeah. You know, they just started getting all the packaging ready and things like that. Um, in the 4812 gigabyte configuration, so you know the GPU and in memory configuration, it's gone for the foreseeable future, but not forever. So, like Ryan said, maybe it will come back as a as a. Well, they say it's gone for the foreseeable future, if not forever. So, like, it could just not be a thing. Yeah. Um, 4070 Ti. I like Ryan's thing, the 4080 Lite. Right. That was was the... That was the one that I thought... That would be cool. You know, a Lite. Yeah, I kind of like that. It it made more sense than any of the other namings that we've seen. Um, But, yeah, so for those hoping that the 4080 12 gigabyte was going to be the 4070... That's likely not the case. You're going to get an even more cut down version <laughs> of the card. So it's a little bit, a little bit. Well, who knows? Maybe we'll have a 4070 with 16 gigs. So they couldn't, you know, maybe they're playing, you know, who knows? I don't know. Yeah. We'll see kind of what the, what happens there. Um, also, uh, very quietly and without a real announcement, uh, NVIDIA partners started launching RTX 3060 cards with eight gigabytes of memory. Um, so 3060 is the best selling card from NVIDIA of their 30 series. Very popular, good price to performance ratios. Um, the original card launched with 12 gigabytes of uh, GDDR6 across a 192 bit memory bus. So you got 360 gigabytes a second of memory bandwidth. The new 8 gig version, um, same data rate, uh, but it's across a 128 bit memory bus. Uh, which works out to only 240 gigabytes a second of man- memory bandwidth. Um, it's likely that NVIDIA is putting this card out to compete with the um, the Intel Arc A750, as well as the Radeon RX 6600, the non-XT version. Um, so if you're in kind of that price range, performance range, you could look at this over the original, save some money, uh, you know, 20, 30 bucks. Uh, I still, I'm still not a fan of this. I'm, I'm not, really? I'm never, I'm never going to be a fan of this. At least this one isn't like the 3080 where you had different performance right, right, and right. like the 40 and, and the like the, GPU. the 4080 was supposed to be right. This is just a str- uh, straight memory swap. Basically. I'm fine with it. Uh, and, but it is different memory bus. The bus is different. So you're going from yeah. a, a 192 bit memory bus to 128. So I'm just I'm not a fan of these. Just come out with the cards, you know. It, it's 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 confusing to consumer. It yeah, especially one, a new a new card when you just launched your 4000 series. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and again, somebody sees this, they're like, "Oh, this one's so much cheaper than the other 3060. I'll just get this one." Then they don't realize, you know. It's it's just confusing, especially for first time buyers and people, you know, a lot of times like that first build, like you you just scrounged up enough money. You're trying to make every dollar count and then you see this and then you're like, oh, I should have got this instead. And yeah. So now this is <laughs> something that I showed you, Ryan. And I was like, what is this? Like, what is this um, motherboard? It's just so crazy. When I first looked at it, I was like, what? No. But all right, this looks uh, legit. Apparently, ASRock is making a Z790 Sonic, as in Sonic the Hedgehog themed motherboard. Um, it's basically their Z790 PG Riptide, but with a Sonic theme. Um, so all the all the uh, I don't know what you call it. like all the heat Graphics sinks and everything. And, yeah. They're all silver, and then you have a blue Sonic logo, the Sonic logo on the heat sinks, and then you have a ring, which I don't. Maybe it's like a. I know. I was trying to tell if it was like an LCD or something that was. I don't think it's an LCD an animated ring. I think it's like one of those things where you like you move the way you look at it. It's oh different. lenticular. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Um, very interesting. Here's the box. That's where we pulled this image from. Is from the box. That's why it doesn't look like a like like a real render. Um, but it appears to be real. I don't think somebody would go to all this trouble to make something that looks fake. And like, if they did, they did a good job. 
yeah, the back of the board has this huge Sonic logo on it. It's really interesting. You know, Sonic is a Sega owned property. It, this box doesn't say Sega on it anywhere. That's the one thing that I was like, where's the Sega? Like the here's the box. Like there's no Sega logo, which is weird. That's true. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool if, if it comes out. Uh, likely because of licensing and things, this would only come out in China. Um, which we're guessing that's the case. Um, and it's interesting to see a collab on a motherboard for a non... I mean, I, I assume you can play some of the Sonic games on PC maybe, but like, I mean, Sonic's a Sega game. Like it's a right. console game. Why not um, like a, for, a Fortnite or yeah, yeah. Like big PC brand? Yeah, and maybe they can license this for free in China, right? I don't know what, how the law or how that stuff works, but that's what a lot of people are saying. Like this is just being licensed in China. It's the only way you can get one. Maybe you can get one sent over here. Um, Lee in the chat said, he said, it's kind of cool. He said, I miss all the art on the GPUs from back in the day. It's so cool to see it come to motherboard space. Yeah, it's great. I love stuff like this, especially if you're a fan of a certain game or something to get a motherboard that really, and again, I feel like, a lot like that the cyberpunk 4090 is just kind of like a top plate like it's not really just, yeah you know what i mean yeah, yeah. this is much more integrated with like, yeah it's much more integrated like even the it's kind of hard to see in this picture the back but like silk even screen the, looks pretty sweet the back silk screen and then the back plate also said like it's all done very well by ass rock so yeah yep, we'll see cool. if this is the thing if if it is we'll get actual real pictures of the board because again this is just pulled from the box picture um we'll see if it's actually a real thing uh we have damon in the chat good to see you here man what do you think of this uh sonic sonic the motherboard for master like i ordered two of them yeah he's like yeah um but yeah it's just like i said interesting stuff i like to see it if if, if it actually would uh come out there um what else do we have oh insane overclocking record uh, was beat with the we talked about the Core i9 13900K coming out, um, insane overclocking record. So the last processor to beat like the highest overclocked processor was actually the AMD FX 8370 in 2014. Um, it was overclocked to 8722.78 megahertz. Um, and that was over its four gigahertz. Jeez. Uh, so over 8.7 gigahertz from its four gigahertz. Uh, the new 13900K, of course, it's out now. People are overclocking it. Um, this was overclocked to 8,812.85 megahertz or 8.8, uh, or yeah, 8.8 .8 gigahertz. Crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. Um, this was. To say this was done by Elmore, uh, professional overclocker, obviously. Um, just a Hyper 212 Evo keeping that cool, right? No, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, obviously. It's so LN2 going on over yeah. here. Um, you know, <clears throat> power, you know, power connect, power, whatever, conditioning for, and cleaning. Yeah, yeah it's... lots of different stuff going on, but it's cool to see. I love like seeing pushing new hardware far as you can push it and again it's been since 2014 right i'm surprised this... that that record has been there that long yeah um so it's really cool to see and i and i think we might even see higher ones as as everything matures a little bit um but really cool to see so if you're into overclocking check this out uh it is the highest overclock cpu uh to date i guess uh which is super super cool and then uh, Ryan has the last three articles uh, up here. Yeah, so uh, Rode has come out with their kind of gaming division known as Rode X. And from this screenshot here, this first image, it reminds me a lot of kind of the audio setup that I'm going with uh, as far as Elgato goes, right? I have the Wave microphone right in front of me using Wavelink. This uh, screenshot here looks very similar to uh, the Wavelink application so kind of that all-in-one audio mixing platform which is really nice i love wavelink um it had some issues early on that 
just you know software things that needed to be worked out and just kind of getting used to utilizing it um but it's really a, a very handy piece of software so i'm guessing this uh, unify application from road uh operates very similarly um looks like they've got some additional uh audio functions you can do you know an air horn of course to add in there to your uh your epic plays and things like that or like you know changing your your uh your voice over to a robot sound, things like that. Um, so some pretty neat features, you know, kind of gimmicky, but uh, whatever. Um, and then they also have the uh, XDM 100 dynamic USB microphone. Uh, definitely be interested to take a look at that. Um, I've taken a look at many uh, microphones over the years here. Um, and then they also have a XCM 50 condenser USB microphone. So um, just some new products from Rode. Obviously Rode is, uh, pretty popular um audio microphone company you know uh you know you you utilize road microphones for your camera and things yep. like that i've got them on my my canon when i um, use an external microphone uh, just kind of a tried and true brand there so um, this is just them getting into the gaming and streaming the thing uh, that i like is i think that's what made the elgato wave or the wave you know, microphone so great because we've seen companies come out with great USB microphones for years, right? But right. the software that brought it all together and basically made it for streaming, for if you're gaming, like that's what made the Elgato mic so good. So it's good to see another company come out with a kind of software suite that complements their microphones because you can have great microphones, right? But yeah. if you don't have the tools to use that specifically and i like it i, I like this and again road like you said uh they they make great microphones um I, for for podcasting for cameras um so it's good to see an all-in-one suite for specifically gamers and streamers because i mean that's that's blowing up it's crazy how popular it is so it's yep. it's well yeah, i would love to see the software you know how the yeah, software multi works. multi stream you know multi multiple audio channels and inputs and things like that. And just being able to route them how you need to and adjust them on the fly um, and kind of monitor those things is so helpful. Um, I've always got Wavelink up on this monitor above my main screen, just so I can keep track of what's going on and uh, yeah. take care of things as needed. So very cool. Yeah. Uh, next up, Alpha Cool has a new uh, NVMe M.2 uh form factor SSD water block. We have the HDX Pro. Uh, and we were just kind of talking about SSD cooling. Um, was it last week or the week before, it right? We were kind of saying, hey, the, you know, those Gen 5 drives are going to get really hot. They're going to need that cooling. So Alpha Cool is here to uh, provide said cooling. Uh, looks like it's got some barb connections um, on the end here. Looks to be, I believe it's machined uh, aluminum on this. I, I need to look forget what the material was but it, it's you know a nice machined uh look here on it i think this looks good some of the water cooling uh for ssds i've seen in the past i've just haven't been a big fan of and um, it's lower profile so if, it is, if it is. your m.2 sits under your graphics card you're not going to necessarily i mean you still have to run the it, i think the next picture down shows it connected um yeah, i was looking just here i know they yeah they also offer a brass variant um as gotcha. well so okay but like uh, you're gonna have to route the um the water the to the tubing right but it sits lower profile so you can correct. it it doesn't get in the way of your graphics cards because yeah, yeah larger heat definitely... sinks like again that asphalt heat sink that i have that's like super thick i mean that's it's gonna be in the way no it's enormous um, yeah i like the low profileness of this um and it looks like they've got that uh you know a uh connector there so that you can put this into your existing loop um to to get the cooling there over to the ssd so no it's cool i like the look of it um i guess we'll see um okay so it is brass cooler bottom uh that's been nickel plated so gotcha yeah very cool i just thought i thought you'd get a kick out of it because you're the water cooling oh, guy. See, yeah I like it. and i'm telling like you it. gen 5 drives are gonna run super hot i'm telling you i uh, yeah yeah i'd love to see like something besides barb coolers i don't know if it makes sense on something so small um, yeah i know that they'll, they'll make you know uh it'd be cool to see a i think they're the again connection on this someone trying to keep, trying to keep the the clearance down i think that's the yeah, big, yeah, yeah. big thing for sure yeah 
but yeah, very, very cool to see that there. Oh yeah. Uh, Damon says it's going to be nickel plated copper and brass. I just thought this top piece here might be like a cover that looked like it was uh, milled in some form. You can kind of see those lines in the reflection yeah. of the, the body there. Um, and then we have next computer with their uh, like a uh, bunk bed style monitor here. I like this. Add a secondary monitor on top of your laptop. I don't know if I like the, I, I think I'd probably get used to it pretty easily because, again, I have a monitor stacked on top of my main display um, and use it quite often. Um, and it's probably a, a better solution for laptops, being that a lot of times a flight or a train ride or is, maybe yeah. just where you're using that laptop, you don't have the benefit of a wide workspace, but you can go up, right? Yeah. So you can just kind of stack this on top of your display and get an additional screen there, which uh, is, is pretty cool. Uh, you know, we kind of have seen some laptops that have prototyped extra screens popping out from the sides. This one allows you to set it on top. Um, I have that portable LCD that I reviewed a while back, um, but it has to sit next to your um, system. This being able to adjust and uh, show over the top is pretty awesome. Yeah, I like it. And it comes with like the little the little stand thing that goes on the like the back side of your laptop. Right. Um, the little kickstand. So it, it goes up on that. I, I like it. it. Like, like Ryan said, especially for traveling, like it would just be so awesome to have a second screen, you know, um, on, on a flight yeah. and you know how small those tray tables are. I mean, it would, this, this kind of solves that problem or like if you're even, you know, out in a coffee shop, like I said, there's so many places where you have like limited space and there's enough room for a laptop, but nothing else. And, Having the second screen for productivity, at least for me, is is great. So I really like this. Uh, it looks I like, like it, yeah, it's got a, you know, nineteen twenty by ten eighty uh, resolution. Yeah. Two USB uh, Type C three point one ports with pass through charging, a mini display, or I'm sorry, mini uh, HDMI, and a USB Type C. So not only do you like get your video connectivity, you've got some additional USB ports uh, for connectivity and things like that. <laughs> leave it to bob i want to do a multi-monitor yeah oh, there you go in an economy airlines hell yeah dude i mean the more product like especially on this like i said fine fine economy which i do sorry guys I'm not rich um having a multi-monitor setup yeah. in, in one of those little seats is uh would be great and i'm sure the people cool. around me would be like what is this guy doing <laughs> i think i remember the one time i was like playing a game i had that this is like years ago i had that dell xps the 13 yeah with like I, I don't know what nvidia but it had you know and i could like game for like i think at the time like an hour and a half on on the battery yeah, <laughs> yeah and i was like yeah i was on a flight i was on a flight to ces i think and i'm just like playing a video game and all the people around and this is like very you know early like this was like 10 years ago maybe even longer seeing somebody that. doing that was like not yeah a common, yeah it wasn't a common thing i was like what are you doing and that's like I'd have the two screens sitting in my economy seat, and people would be like, "What is this? What is this guy doing?" You can well, just like you could have like a movie or something playing, and then be like working, so you can kind of like pay attention to both. Yeah, right? exactly. You don't like the in-flight entertainment? Just uh, bring your exactly. own. Exactly. Um, so talking, to, that is our news for the week. Uh, coming up next week, I have a really cool keyboard. Um, this one is the steel series apex pro mini so this is a 60 percent keyboard um it has their new switches um which what are they called omnipoint, omnipoint yeah. 2.0 so you can adjust the actuation in the software they're like a magnetic switch um so hmm. So I, you can see in this picture, it's kind of hard for me to explain, but you can set how far because it, I guess the magnet detects it at a certain point, you can set your actual actuation and you can set two to like, so a full press down, you can set for one command. And then for like a half press, you can set for another command. Yeah, my feet, my fingers are not nimble enough for. A I think press, if you right? got <laughs> used to it, I haven't tested it, but yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, you see, probably. so like you can see in this example, that's kind of how uh, these new switches work, which are really cool. And again, these are different switches; they're not your normal mechanical. It's a magnet, uh, which will be interesting how they feel and everything like that. Um, this uses their new wireless tech, uh, Quantum 2.0, so completely wireless. Uh, 
it has PBD guess, keycaps on this as well. Just think um, of like the the shutter button on a camera, right? Like you press it part way to focus and then yeah. all the way, right? Maybe it's similar to that. Yeah, or it could be. So I'll be taking a look at this uh, this upcoming week. And then I have an air cooler from Deep Cool, and I love the way this thing looks. It is one of the better looking air coolers, but it's a small air cooler. Hopefully, I, I haven't tested it yet, but hopefully I feel like this will be one of those coolers to um, go against the Cooler Master. What is it? The Hyper 212? Yeah, the Hyper 212. It looks very much like the Hyper 212, except for this is all white. So this is the AK400 WH. WH stands for white. It is all white. Everything on this is white. White fans. Well, it's not silver. It's white. Okay. Yeah. What the heat sink is white. Uh, the heat pipes are white. Like everything is white, uh, except for the base. The base is not white. Well, like this part of the base. But I mean, you sure. can see. Um, has that new deep cool styling, which you saw on the liquid cooler that you took a look at. Right. Yep. Um, I really like their styling on this. If you're doing a white build and want an air cooler, this is going to be one that you should definitely consider. So I'll have a review of this next week as well. So lots of cool stuff coming up. We talked in the beginning of the podcast about new desk build, new PC build, man, just busy, busy, man. It's busy. busy. One of these so, days you'll, you'll get them done. Yeah, no, it's, it's all about like, <laughs> I know. So the thing is, is that I have to break that stuff down behind me and organize everything. And you really can't see everything that's on those desk, but there's like a lot of crap that just needs to organize. So I have to organize all of that. Then I have to break that down. Then I have to break this down and move it over there. And then I have to put together a whole a new, other, yeah, a brand yeah. new desk. And you, are you going to film that too? The whole yeah, process? So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, put to get, I have to not put only together. You're doing the work, you're filming it as well. So, I have to put together a whole new desk. I have to cable manage everything. I have to set up the webcam. I have to do all that. And, I'm, and I want to do it with a new PC build. So, I'm building a new PC at the same time to go with Dang. the desk because I don't want to connect everything, do a whole thing and then have to rewire everything and do all that. So it's all coming together. It's just going to take, take some time. I would say, what is it? it? We're coming into November. I would say it will be done by the end of November. I have most of the stuff. Only thing I haven't ordered yet is the PC case, all the fans, the AIO. Is that it? Was there anything else that I said? I don't know. The, Are you adding any order? like lights or you have everything you want for lighting? So far, yeah, all I, they're all RGB fans, so I think that would be good. I don't think there's anything else. I got the new light stand or the new stand for the camera, and then the ring lights. I bought that. I bought uh, cable organizing stuff, so I have all that. So I don't really need to order that much. I'm just waiting. You buy that under desk one you were showing me? Yeah, I did. Buy, I bought the big one too, so it's like eighty bucks for this under the desk cable organizing thing. Um, yeah, I'm really excited because I want to get a new setup going. It, always, it just always feels good when you like change, even if you like say like I move this setup to just over there, just this, like it's always just feels good when you move some, you know, you move something yeah. around or even if you just clean up your desk. Cause I'm sure, you know, Ryan, like if your desk oh, is a mess, I cleaned and then, it and like to shoot, to reshoot a couple things for this, uh, cooler master keyboard. And it was like, ah, oh, this is nice. And it lasted for like two days. And now I've got yeah. a stack of comics and all sorts of other crap on the desk again. Yeah. Uh, Damon said he's waiting for Asus to finally release the the damn Loki SFXL series. Yeah, I had a, well, at least with the case that I'm going with, I have to go with an SFXL uh, or yeah, SFX or SFXL power supply side so to buy one of those. Or no, actually I have, a, I have one coming. Never mind. Uh, so I don't have to buy that. So it's like, again, for it's like $200 uh, for a thousand watt, one of those. So lots of stuff going on. Uh, Ryan, did you do anything tech related this week before we get out of here? No, 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 no I don't think so. No, nothing tech related. Um, but yeah, guys, we're coming into holiday season. Lots of reviews we have, at least on my end of things. I have a ton of different products and then we have, uh, we still have X670E motherboards. I have Z79 or yeah, Z70, Z790 motherboards <laughs> here. Um, all the stuff for the desk build will all be content as well. So you guys can follow that process. Um, just a lot of stuff going on. So definitely exciting time. Um, lots of lots of work to get done. So we're excited for all that. So just stay tuned on the website. We'll have all that stuff. We'll push it out through social media so you guys can see it there as well. 
Um, we are going to be getting off of this stream, and then Ryan will be starting up our gaming stream. If you don't know, after our podcast, we we game a little bit. We're pretty mediocre, but we game uh, over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Think Computers. Head on over there, uh, and Ryan will have the stream up shortly. Uh, we're playing some Apex Legends tonight, which I'm pretty excited. So I feel like I mean, we, we played last week, did we not? Or no, yeah, did we? But we did played, we? Uh, was it Control? Or wait. Or we played the, play? yeah, we played the whatever it was. But yeah, Control. I'm excited to do some gaming. I I, I charge my mouse. I'm, I'm super excited. Um, so yeah, so twitch.tv forward slash Think Computers. Get on over there. We are going to end things. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Nelson in the chat, Damon in the chats, uh, Lee in the chats. I think that's everybody who was who was in the uh, chat. The first yeah. comment though was from a, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of his name now. The uh, first one I'm seeing I'm is Nelson. There. No, very first Winston Chim. Oh, uh, wonder why it's earlier. It said, I know, it said Facebook user. user, but I went over to Facebook and that's, that's uh, what it was. good to see Winston here. Hopefully I'll see him in uh, January at CES. Uh, he just moved to Canada. So uh, good to see him on this side of the, uh, the world. So anyways, guys, again, twitch.tv forward slash think computers, and we will see everybody.